Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to extend your Nextcloud server with block storage. In a previous video, I showed you guys how to build your very own Nextcloud server, and in today's video, we're going to take it to the next level and extend our storage. Block storage is a great way to do that because you can add an additional volume to your instance and that gives you even more space for your data. So let's go ahead and get started. Now on my end, I've already created a Nextcloud instance in a previous video. And what I'm going to do is use that same instance as the example for today. And here's the instance right here. So I'm just going to grab the IP address. And down here in the terminal, what I'm going to do is just use SSH to connect to that server. I already have a user created for myself there as well, so I don't need to use root or anything like that. So I'll just press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. And now we're in. We're now connected to my Nextcloud instance. Now, if I execute df-h, you'll see that I have a bunch of mounts here, but actually I only have one that truly matters right now for our use case here. I have the root file system, the rest are just system mounts here, but I have 70 gigs free and that's pretty reasonable. But one of the benefits of block storage is that you can have a smaller instance, but a larger disk. So that way you have a dedicated place to put your files, especially for Nextcloud, that's really important. So what do we do? Well, back here in the cloud dashboard, what we can do is create a new volume. So I'll click on volumes and I'll create one, but we also see a list of volumes that we might already have here. I have one for Plex that I did in a previous video. But anyway, what I'm going to do is create a new volume. And what I'm going to call it is Nextcloud Data. I'm going to make it 200 gigabytes. I'm feeling very generous right now. And we see the cost associated with the device down here. So as we increase it, we can see that the price changes. So at least that way, you know what the cost is going to be and whether or not it fits within your budget. You could also start lower and then upgrade or increase the size later on. You don't have to choose everything all at once. It's perfectly fine to choose a smaller number. And then later on, you can always enlarge the volume. When it comes to region, we want to choose the region where our Linode instance is actually located, the same region, because we want it to be accessible from that instance. So I created mine in Toronto. That's where my next cloud server is. So I'll click on that. Then next, we could choose the Linode instance that we want to use, the one that we want to attach this volume to. So of course, on my end, it's this one right here, my next cloud server. So I'll click on it. And if we'd like, we could actually add some tags. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Let's go ahead and create the volume. So now that the volume is created, the Linode dashboard actually gives us all the commands that we need to set up the volume, which is very useful. So what I'll do is click on the clipboard icon next to the first command that'll copy it to the clipboard. And then down here, what I could do is type sudo and then paste in the command. And what this command will do is format the block storage device. So I'll press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. And it should happen pretty quick. In fact, it's already done. Now we can't actually use the volume yet. We need to mount it. We did format it, so that's a step in the right direction, but there's more that we have to do. And thankfully, we have the next command right here. We're just creating a directory that we're going to attach the storage device to. So I'll just use sudo yet again because I'm not logged in as root. And I want to make this directory slash mnt slash nextcloud data. So I'll press enter. And that's already done. And back up here, you guessed it. I am going to copy the third command, this one right here. And as usual, I'm going to paste that right into my terminal. And this is actually going to mount the volume to the system so we could actually start using it. And that was pretty fast. If I execute df h, then as you can see, I have the new volume here at the very end. So not only is it attached to the system, it's actually completely ready to go. But there's one more thing that I recommend we do before we consider this part done at least. We need to make sure that this volume is automatically mounted every time the Linode instance starts. And we do that by adding a special line to the etsyfs tab file. So what I'll do is type sudo nano. I want to edit that file. It's located at slash etsy slash fs tab. 
and a full description of what the FS tab file does and what it's responsible for is beyond the scope of this video. But a short summary is that this particular file is read during the boot process. It reads it line by line and it mounts every storage device that's listed here one after another. We don't have a line currently for the new storage volume, but luckily, if we go back up here, we have the syntax right here that we need. So what I'm going to do is paste it right here in the Etsy FS tab file. I just pasted it as the last line in the file. And what it's going to do is look for this particular device. This is now on the Linode instance because we attached it and it's going to mount it here to slash MNT slash nextcloud. So I'll save the file. I'll hold control and press O and press enter to save the file and control X to exit out. Now we do have the new volume right here and we've added it to the Etsy FS tab file. So we're in a pretty good place. But even though we added a new storage volume for this particular server, Nextcloud itself doesn't know to use it yet. So what we have to do next is configure Nextcloud to start using this particular directory for its data. So what I'm going to do right now is change into the directory where Nextcloud is installed, the app directory, if you will. And in my case, it's this one right here. So here we have the application directory, like I mentioned, if I list the storage, we have a bunch of things here. But we also have a data directory because that's where our data is saved. And that's exactly what we want moved over to that other directory. And let's see if there's something inside there. I actually don't know because I didn't save anything yet, but there are some default files that come along for the ride when you do install Nextcloud. So let's list the storage of the data directory to see what we're actually working with here. And permission is denied. So I will just do sudo ls and then data. And as you can see, we do have some objects inside that directory. So what I'm going to do is actually go inside that directory. And I should probably change to root because it's a protected directory. Let's try that again. We're here in the next cloud directory. And then we'll go into the data directory. So what I'm going to do is just move everything that's inside this directory to its new location, the new data directory. And that data directory was under slash MNT slash nextcloud data, just like you see here. So I'm going to press enter. And if I list the storage of the new directory, you can see that we have the content right there. Now, of course, you could use rsync or whatever method you'd like. We just basically want to get the data over to this directory. And we moved it out of the original directory over to the new one. So how do we actually go ahead and configure Nextcloud to tell it which one we actually want it to use? Well, let's go back a directory. We're in the root of the application directory now. And inside here, we actually have a config directory. So what I'm going to do is go inside that directory. And then we have config.php right here. And that's exactly what I'm going to edit. So right here on this line, we have data directory. And currently, it's pointing to slash var slash www slash nextcloud, or basically the app directory name, whatever you decided to name your folder, and then the subdirectory of data. But we moved everything there to the new storage volume. So we really shouldn't need all of this. We're going to simplify this quite a bit. So I'm going to remove most of this. And I'll replace it with slash mnt slash nextcloud hyphen data. Now the rest of this we can leave alone. I think that's good enough. So what I'll do is save the file and then close out. So another thing that we want to do is go back into the data directory. We want to make sure that everything was copied over. Sometimes there might be some hidden files in there that we also need to move as well. So everything should be out of the data directory, but let's see if there's any hidden directories inside there. So I'll just do ls-la. And as you can see, there's actually a few files right here. So what I'm going to do is move .ht access and I'll also move .oc data as well. We want to move that to the new storage volume. So I'll move it right there and that should be good. The other thing I like to do is check the permissions of the directories themselves just to make sure that everything is lined up. So we have the original data folder right here that's now empty. And this directory is owned by the user www data. 
and the same with the group. So what's the permissions on the new storage? Let's go ahead and check that out. So we can see that WWW data is the owner of these files as well. So the permissions did come along for the ride. That makes sense. I did move it. But just to be on the safe side, though, what I want to do is make sure that the WWW data user is the sole owner of everything. So what I'll do is type chown dash capital R. And what I want to do is type WWW hyphen data colon WWW hyphen data again. And I'm going to apply this to slash MNT slash NextCloud data, which I've now done. Now, this is probably completely unnecessary, but what I'm going to do actually is reboot the server. I want to make sure that everything comes up clean and that there's no problems when I try to save a file or anything like that. And that NextCloud is using the appropriate directory for the storage. So I'll press enter and I'll be right back as soon as this is done rebooting. So let's see if enough time has passed yet. It should be up and running by now. Let's go ahead and find out. I'll just recall the command that I used to connect to the server in the first place. And that's a good sign. It's asking me for the password, which I seem to never be able to type correctly the first time. Anyway, now we're in. So as we can see right here, we do indeed have the NextCloud data storage volume mounted to the system. So that's a really good sign. So let's go ahead and go back to a web browser. What I want to do is log into NextCloud, just make sure that everything is correct and that nothing is actually screaming at me or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is go here to a new tab. I'll type in the domain for my NextCloud server. In my case, that's nextcloud.learnlinux.cloud. And here we are. So I'll go to settings. Let's go to the overview. Just make sure there's no errors. And so far, all checks have passed. That's pretty cool. So at this point, you should have Dexcloud set up with block storage, which is really cool. You should have a lot more space that you could play with. And even if you do fill it up, you could always just enlarge it later, which is pretty cool. So now at this point, your next cloud server should have even more storage, which is really cool because block storage is really cool. It allows you to extend your instances, add new storage. It's just a great solution and I love it. So go ahead and let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say about this. And as always, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so because, well, we have some awesome content coming very soon and I would hate for you to miss it. I'll see you again very soon and thanks again for watching.